What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic day. Thanks so much for checking this video out. If you guys enjoy it, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. But if for any reason at all you guys don't enjoy this video, please feel free to hit that dislike button and make sure you leave me a comment down below letting me know what I can do to improve my future videos. Any and all feedback is greatly appreciated here guys. But in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the gear that Rob O'Neill used on the raid to kill Bin Laden. Now, of course, Rob O'Neill is the super famous Navy SEAL who actually killed Osama Bin Laden during Operation Neptune Spear. And huge shout out to Rob O'Neill for sharing this video of some of the gear he's held on to over the years that he used on the raid to kill Bin Laden. I'm gonna go ahead and play that video for you guys now and let you watch it all the way through and see all the gear for yourselves. And then I've got some photos of some additional gear that he doesn't show off in the videos because it's actually in the 9-11 museum. And I'll kind of break that down for you guys and show you what's going on with all of that. Stuff that I took on the mission with me. I got the pants that I wore right here. You can see the knee pad is built in. It matches the shirt that I donated to the 9-11 Museum. Um, on the back of that we had, uh, we have our belt that we would connect our med kit to, wear that on the pants. The med kit's full of just stuff that you can use on yourself in case you get shot. And then it had a tourniquet on the front. Carried some extra American flags on the mission and uh, a set of gloves that we wanted gloves that were thick enough that we could fast rope. It could take the heat of the rope, but also thin enough that when we landed, we could get our fingers in the trigger because we knew we'd uh, be in a fight as soon as we, our feet hit the deck. We brought a couple sets of uh, handcuffs that we didn't need and a headlamp for once the shooting's done. If it's too dark, you can turn this on and find stuff if you're looking for intelligence. Big heavy sledgehammer that was worth it. This will get you through locked doors quickly or even through walls if you have a little bit of time. And then that's part of the DNA kit that we would use to identify in case he was unrecognizable. These are three of the four magazines that I carried with the bullets. I carried these in my vest and I had one more magazine. It was in my gun and I ended up giving that one to the analyst who found him so she could have a souvenir for all her hard work. And then a couple other things. We've got I don't know, a notebook and some pens, some more cuffs, and then a disposable urine bag for the flight in. It's like a mini diaper. Okay, so like I said, that video there is just some of the gear that Rob O'Neill actually kept. He donated quite a bit to the 9-11 Museum, and now we're gonna be going over some of those items that are actually found in the museum today. And first off, we have one of the magazines that the DevGrew operators used on the raid. I don't believe that this is Rob O'Neill's magazine from his gun because he does say in the video that he actually gave that to the analyst who found Osama Bin Laden. So I'm assuming this is most likely one of the magazines from a different operator that was on the mission. And here we have the uniform with the plate carrier and the helmet that Rob O'Neill wore during the raid, which is so cool that he donated all of this stuff to the museum. I think that is just amazing. And if you look at the front of his plate carrier, just above where it says his name, O'Neill, you can see a red patch with a demon skull and a bullet hole in the top of the demon's head. There's actually a really sick backstory to this patch that I'll share with you guys real quickly. Now, obviously it's a red patch because Rob O'Neill was on Red Squadron of Development Group, but the demon head with the bullet hole actually has a really cool backstory to it. So the story goes of this patch that apparently Red Squadron was using Metallica music to interrogate terrorists. Now, they don't go into exactly how they were using the music to interrogate terrorists, but it's pretty safe to assume that it involved locking the terrorist in a room and playing Metallica music at a very high volume for extended periods of time. Now, somehow, word got to Metallica that they were doing this, and Metallica really didn't like it. So somehow, they got in touch with someone in the Navy or Dev Group or the SEAL team somehow and informed them that they were very unhappy with this and wanted them to stop using their music for such violent actions immediately. 
Now, another band known as Demon Hunter, which is actually one of my favorite bands growing up as a kid. I, I love heavy metal music, and Demon Hunter was just one of my favorites when I was younger. I had the shirt and everything. I was a huge nerd. But anyway, Demon Hunter somehow heard that Metallica had demanded that development groups stop using their music immediately. So Demon Hunter sent Red Squadron a bunch of CDs and hats and all kinds of merchandise and told them to go at it with their music, which is Honestly, the coolest thing ever. And ever since then, Rob O'Neill and a bunch of guys of Red Squadron have been pretty big Demon Hunter fans and had custom Demon Hunter patches made. And the Demon Skull with the bullet going through its skull is the Demon Hunter band logo. It is literally all of their album arts and everything. So Rob O'Neill and the team had these Demon Hunter patches made and rocked them on a lot of their plate carriers and gear in general. And from time to time have been reported that they like to listen to Demon Hunter on their way to do missions to get hyped up, which is the coolest freaking thing ever and makes Demon Hunter 10 times cooler. Now, obviously, Development Group is a pretty secretive group, and we don't really know all the details there, so take that with a grain of salt. I don't know how accurate any of that information is, but that is for sure the Demon Hunter logo, and that's how the story goes according to the interwebs. Moving on here, this is obviously not in the 9-11 Museum here, but this is a gear locker of one of the Red Squadron Development Group guys. I don't believe this is Rob O'Neill's. It certainly could be but I don't think so. This is just someone else on Red Squadron, but this is a locker full of gear that was definitely taken on the raid, which is super freaking cool to see. You can see two different plate carriers. They got pistols on the top left, helmet with night vision, a little MP7 in there, a bunch of American flag patches, all kinds of sick gear. I think these little homemade like DIY wooden gear lockers are just the sickest looking things ever. And I just gotta say, I am so glad that we live in a world with social media where guys like this, dev crew guys, Navy SEALs, Green Berets, Rangers can post things like this and we can actually see what a tier one development group operator's gear locker looks like. That is just it's just so cool, man. I never thought I'd be super thankful for social media, but totally am in that aspect because it's just so sick, especially like even with like as awful as the things going on in Ukraine is the, the fact that we live in a world where there's so much social media going on that you can get on freaking TikTok and Instagram and stuff and see clips of like special operation Ukrainian fighters and stuff who are currently fighting in a war and posting little clips and pictures of their gear and stuff on social media. It's just what a freaking weird world we're living in right now. But I, at least that is one benefit of things is being able to see just a little bit more detail and, and history into these incredible, incredible men and women who are fighting so bravely for our nation and, and for their own nations. It's just so cool that you can see this stuff. And I just, I, I don't know if you guys are as interested in it as I am. I hope you are. Uh, but I just think it's the coolest thing ever that we live in a world where you can see this stuff now. Because when I was growing up as a kid, uh, you didn't really have that much access to these guys at all. And, and it's really cool getting to see it. But like the fact that Rob O'Neill, the development group operator that killed Osama bin Laden, can just get on Instagram and post a video of him going through his old gear bag, looking at some of the gear that he took on the raid to kill Osama bin Laden. That's just the coolest freaking thing ever. And I just, I think that's sick. But anyway, that's going to be the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you want to see more stuff like this and I will talk to you guys in the next video.